Hey, what's up? I'm Gene Moore, and you are watching Gospel Goodies TV. Gospel Goodies. Gospel Goodies. Gospel Goodies. This is Gospel Goodies. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, you know, I always consider myself just to be a good old country boy because uh, no matter how deep in the city I get, you can still hear the southern draw <laughs> come out when I talk. Uh, but I, uh, I've been singing pretty much all my life. I didn't start singing publicly until I was around 15 years old. Uh, I started singing with a community choir in Houston. It was called the Southeast Inspirational Choir. Uh, that's actually the same choir uh, that uh, Yolanda Adams used to sing with. Uh, from there on, I started to sing background for uh, Kim Burrell. Uh, then it led from her to uh, Dorinda Clark Cole. Uh, I was featured on her live recording in Houston, the Rose of Gospel CD, and I uh, did backgrounds for that. I was doing studio sessions for uh, Jason Nelson and William Murphy and L. Spencer Smith and uh, uh, started singing with Kirk Franklin. I sang with Kirk for about seven years. I uh, went on tour with India Ire. So uh, for years I've been a professional background singer, uh, primarily in the gospel industry. And um, recently uh, I was signed to Motown Gospel and uh, I just put out my latest, well, I can't even say my latest, my debut, <laughs> my debut CD and the CD is entitled The Future. The title, it's basically about uh, my life, my path, uh, where I was, where I am now and where I plan on uh, becoming. And if you listen to the songs on the record, each song speaks to uh, some portion of my life. Like uh, there's a song that Eric Dawkins wrote called Not There Yet. And uh, the song is talking about how uh, you're striving for perfection perfection you know you want you want to be whole in Christ but you know you're still dealing with some things but however you know we know that as we keep walking with Christ we'll become perfect uh, then there's another song that uh, which is actually the title cut called the future it opens up and it says that there is a seed that's rooted in me growing inside for my destiny visions I see greatness I feel and uh, that song was really a uh, uh, coming from a place of, of my younger years, you know, I always saw myself doing great things, but I dealt with so many different insecurities that made me feel like I wasn't good enough or uh, maybe this just isn't the right thing for me to do. Maybe I need to just try something else, you know, and so um, all of those things play a part uh, in the man that I am now and in the man that I plan on uh, being in the future. When you're serving in the capacity of background, uh, it's very important that you're on at all times. It's very important that you uh, maintain a certain level of discipline, uh, getting enough sleep, uh, knowing how to retain your parts, knowing how to execute the parts when you need to. So I learned discipline. I learned timeliness. I learned a lot of humility uh, because, you know, one thing uh, that I really feel is important in ministry is that we have to remember that we're still servants. And so serving for a lot of great artists, such as Kim and Israel and Kirk. Uh, it taught me a lot about service and humility. When I was younger, I was always kind of like the square because all of my friends were listening to hip hop. Nothing against it, you know, but I was just never really into it. I, I was listening to uh, Stevie Wonder and Donny Hathaway and Marvin Gaye and Will Downing and Rochelle Farrell and uh, Frank McComb and Robert Glasper and the list goes on and on so uh, a lot of my style was influenced by most of your soulful artists your adult contemporary artists your contemporary jazz artists and so those elements you'll hear in my CD now the problem is how could they translate that to a gospel audience? Because I'm really a soul singer that just likes to sing about the Lord. And so when I uh, got signed to Motown, it took a couple of years for us to customize the sound. And uh, Motown was really, really nice to me. And, you know, they allowed me to uh, kind of meet them at that at that middle ground, you know, they were like, well, you know, you give us a couple of gospel friendly songs and then we'll let you stretch creatively, how you know, however you want. So when you listen to my music, you'll hear like you, uh, I would say you would hear elements of uh, old soul meets new soul, a little jazz, a little R&B, and then you got your straight up gospel. I wrote three, I co-wrote three songs on my record. Uh, the Future, which is the title cut, also Recover, uh, which is my latest single, and I also co-wrote um, uh, uh, Coming Home. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can literally change an environment based on what comes out of your mouth. And so 
the song I Will Recover is, is basically a self-declaration. It's not just you saying this to somebody else, but it's also a self-declaration. Um, quick backstory: story. Uh, when I was writing the song with Aaron Lindsay, we were just talking about how David was in a time of war. And so he got depressed because everything was taken from him, but he made a conscious decision to strengthen himself in the Lord and to go in the enemy's camp and take everything that was stolen from him. And so we've all experienced some kind of a loss, whether you lost peace, you lost joy, um, you may have been married and you lost your marriage, or you may have lost a, a great job. You know, we, we've all been in a position where we felt like we've lost something but you know there was never a time in the Bible where God allowed his children to just suffer in vain you know you may go through that season of, 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 of suffering and having to trust God when you really don't want to but God will always fix it to where you overcome and so the song recover it's a self declaration telling yourself I will recover not I might but I will recover and you have the power to overcome I get that a lot. Honestly, I really can't. I really can't hear it. <laughs> I get that a lot. Like you sound like Stevie Hathaway Jr. And I'm like, look, let me tell you something. I love Donnie and Stevie, but you know, when I listen to Gene Moore, I, I just don't hear. I don't hear that. And and that's not an arrogant thing. That's a humble thing because you know that's Stevie. That's Donnie. They're like legends there's they're great you know and i i'm still considering myself like the new kid up and coming you know just trying to be halfway to where they are you know but i will say that it's definitely an honor uh to get those comparisons i'll be starting a radio show with uh ktsu with uh alexis spite in september yeah because actually actually that was my uh that was my study in college was radio television and film so uh you know it's nice to know that uh, god has a way of bringing things around full circle <laughs>